hair from, what doing. This is if you have sore throat. This is for my garden. How for you? If you put outside, then it, the rain will come inside. <laughs> and when you open it, <laughs> the rain will <laughs> go all over you. This is more beautiful, more appetizing. Yes. Yeah, like that. We've never covered a cherry tomato because it's beautiful. Like, okay, you go for it. Okay. okay. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Are you happy, yeah? Yes! yes. Good food? Yes! <laughs> this is your house. Mikasa is Suka. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, he can eat the whole pack. If you help others, your marriage will be double, triple, uh, multiply, multiply for generations. Original or religions never advocate violence. Yeah? They always have the five or ten precepts. You understand? The first one is, thou shalt not kill. I love you. I could die for you, that kind of love. In front of you, you understand English? You sit right here, right in front of me. Hello, 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 hello. 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 Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Go lại, chào Ben. À, hôm nay Ben, đã làm ra bút tăng lúc lại. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, good children. Yeah, sit, 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 sit. Huh? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, make you wait. I, I, I was busy. Okay. Uh, I was busy. Yeah. Tông yên quên hả? Tông yên sit there, sit there, sit there. Okay, because we cannot sit more in the front. There, one man, English man, standing, sit here. You want? No? Think about it. Don't you want to translate Japanese? Huh? Translate Japanese. Translate? Japanese. 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 Sister. And brother is translate. Translate? Ah, oh, translate here is a little difficulty. Only Japanese. Try to listen. It'll be very noisy, huh? Noisy. Okay, okay. Listen, your mama is very busy. Okay, <laughs> I came late. I have excuse. I tell you why. Okay. Um. Just uh, one moment, then I will tell you why. Uh, otherwise, you say why you always come late. You tell us come early on time, and you come late all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Korean can come here. Can she come here, or is uh, the camera no? No, uh, no. If she's small, it's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Come here, Korea. Want to go here? No? You okay there? Oh, good, 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 good. Stay. Hey, Ijaski, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Your husband okay? He's very has good. he come this time? No, he hasn't, Master. He's has at home. He's oh, home. have to take care of children, huh? Yes. Not children anymore. They're very children big now, right? <laughs> oh, who just left? Why? <laughs> Okay, okay, good, good. Oh, thank you, thank you. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Normally, I uh, give donation. I don't tell you. Okay, understand? Mm -hmm. But uh, last time you already were here, and uh, you know already, and you're here, so I report to you a little bit, so you know why I'm busy all day. Okay, and why I came late. Okay, because I just been taking care of this. Sometimes call and don't. Don't answer, you know, because they're busy, or because of <laughs> the mountain here, <laughs> a bad reception, or because of my <laughs> phone, you know. Mm -hmm. This phone, you, if I use it on a, on a restaurant, they will not serve me again, <laughs> everything. Do you have money? <laughs> Remember last time? <laughs> but it's good, you know, it, it's mostly it's working very well. Mm. Because we, we, uh, Last time I told them to send one million to the country that accept the refugees, you know? Yeah. So I said, send wherever they accept, because sometimes they don't accept. They think I am a bad person <laughs> or something. <laughs> I know I'm good, yeah? And I know my money is clean. 
Yeah, so that's all. It's important, and God knows it. So, so if I, they take it, then it's good. If they don't take, we send somewhere else. That's all. No hard feeling. <laughs> so they they did very well. You know, the uh, Sihu, they sit together and decide. It depends on how many refugees a country takes, and they share it, you know? So up to now. And I today, uh, I tell you also, because I want you to uh, also pray for this country, you know? Uh, last time I mentioned only one or two, like German and uh, a and, uh, uh, UK, yeah? But... Uh, but meanwhile, meanwhile, you know, up to today, I know there are many countries more uh, accept the refugees. And today, a new Slovenia, Slovenia took in refugees, and American even, America take in ten thousand, Slovenia take in ten thousand. Ten thousand was a very small country. <laughs> that country only about two million something people, very small, and take in ten thousand. So I, I, uh, I tell them to 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 give. You know, uh, if they take it, first we give, you know, uh, one million, and if they take any kind of, then we double, give more later on, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so up to now, they, they they did a good job, you know. They share uh, a different country, and it's not about to share money, but they're so good. I have to mention it, because they're so good. I have to mention the Sweden, yeah, Sweden. We, we, we give whatever I list here, we give, yeah. Uh, Sweden and give more or less according to the the quota of the refugees, okay? Because you're here already. Normally, I don't tell you. Well, you're not here. <laughs> and now you're here, and last time I told you, so I just tell you to the end now, okay? That they managed to to give to to transfer money to different countries where they took in refugees, and including Sweden, now Austria. Yeah, Austria and some of the country we give direct to our centers because they say they can go and give it to the refugees, you know, buy things and give to them. And then we also give extra to the Red Cross of that country as well. Okay, I don't mention which is which, they're all beautiful, you know, whether we give directly or we give to the Red Cross, it's, it's all beautiful people, beautiful people. Yeah, whoever accepts the refugees, it's like they are doing me a big favor. Personally, yeah, of course, it's doing everybody else a favor. But for me, personally, I pray for that country. I don't have to. <laughs> they will have immense, immense merit. The country will be prosperous, peace, you know, and happy, no end. Many generations to come. The whole country will benefit from that. But of course, we give them our blessing as well, extra, yeah, because we're so grateful. Such a country deserves, yeah. So in originally they give Sweden. I don't say how much, okay? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's. Uh, I cannot give a lot. <laughs> I don't have a lot. I'm not a billionaire, yeah, multi-millionaire, but not multi-billionaire, yeah. And uh, we have to share around the world, you know, for the emergency. You see what I mean? We are not like a charity organization. Yeah, and what we have, we share, and share only emergency for emergency. Because I, I cannot do charity organization. I, I'm a different line, lineage. Okay, <laughs> I'm busy with other things. But whatever I earn, we can give to charity for the emergency case, so that they can survive until big brothers of Moscow country take them in and provide them with a greater service. Yeah, in Vietnam we say. Uh, a morsel when you're hungry is better than a big bag when you fall. It's like that. So we're giving just morsels. Okay, I, I'm very ashamed to say that I don't have a lot so that I can just, you know, <laughs> throw it around. You know, but we do what we can. Eh? And if you can, uh, you and people outside there can help them. And if you can adopt, you know, some of them, children or elderly, unconditionally, unconditionally if you can afford it. Yeah, don't of course let your uh, family starve, okay? And then if you can afford, then you adopt some, you know? The people in America and Europe, okay? Do that. That's what I wanted to tell you. And by the way, I want to tell you my share also so that you know I also do it with you. Not like, okay, you do, 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 or die, you know? <laughs> Even good things, you cannot force people. Yeah, good things have to be volunteer. 
and have to be from the heart, have to do with love. Hey, yo, long time already. Stop it. <laughs> I gave you many candy already. I'm going to rub all my candy. Here you go. Thank you. Even candy, we don't eat a lot, huh? three, four times a day. Okay, they are medicine. Did you take more medicine? You ask uh, Sabi to buy you a special one. Sabi, you buy her the, the spray or the nose, you runny nose also? Yeah. No? So because the, the runny nose is good. Yeah, you, you, you tell her what is your symptom. Tomorrow she buy good, good she's good one. Mm. Good, yeah. That's the Chinese medicine. Okay, then do it at your own risk. I don't interfere. All right, good, good. Okay, so up to now, they give to Sweden, Austria, Brazil. Oh, no, not Brazil. Brussel. Brussel. Belgium. Belgium. Oh, sorry, Brussel is a country. Oh, Brazil is another <laughs> world. <laughs> Brazil is not in Europe. They don't take refugees. I don't hear about it yet. Maybe. Okay. And Greek. And Holland. Even Holland. I did not know, you see? Uh, so I did not mention them. I think we have. I have to mention them. I did not know Holland because some, some country they took in quietly. You know, like even Jordan, they have more than, oh, they have hundreds of thousands of refugees there all this time. And nobody mentioned it. And uh, Turkey, uh, more than one million, more than one million refugees there. Jordan also more than one million. So for such a small countries, and not like wealthy, you know, not like strong wealthy. They, of course they are wealthy but not like famous for, you know, very well off. And they took in a lot of people because they're nearby, you know. They just stream in and they just had to take them so quietly. But then later, the, some of the world power know and then help them also. But they are very, very good, 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 good Muslim. Yeah, that is a true Muslim country to help your brothers in need, yeah. And these, uh, the one that I mentioned here, like Sweden, Austria, Belgium, Greek, Holland, Spain, yeah, Spanish, Denmark, Poland, even Poland, uh, Finland, even, uh, Norway, Romania, yeah, some just poorer country even help, yeah, Portuguese, yeah, Croatia, yeah, Slovenia is new. Today I only knew it today, so I asked them to send them, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Oh, whatever. <laughs> and then I double it again, okay? If they, if they accept it, we double, yeah. Like if it's 30,000, then we make it 60, you know, send one more later. Because if we send a lot and they don't, they don't take and we stuck the money there, you know, we'll give it to somewhere else first. Sometimes they don't accept, I don't know why. Yeah. A Red, Co Red Cross always accept. up to now, my experience like that. Either I send it privately, or send it through officially, you know, anonymously or officially. They always accept any Red Cross or Red Crescent, Red Crescent Society. It's a half moon. There's a Muslim. They don't say Red Cross. Of course, there's a Red Crescent. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's all red to me. It's all good. <laughs> red is good. <laughs> okay, and even, so we send also to Turkey and Lebanon and Jordan. Yeah, so all this country, um, and Germany, of course. And UK and Bulgaria, Cyprus, Egypt, Estonia, or France, Hungary, Iraq, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Serbia, Syria, USA, Canada, UNHCR, uh, the uh, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and perhaps as we. Uh, reading this, we we're telling this, there are probably other new countries coming up to uh, accept, to to receive the refugees. It's, it just looks like the whole world is opening their arms. The whole world is welcoming the refugees, which is a very, very good thing. Very heartwarming, very meritorious for our planet. All these countries are truly Christian a Buddhist country or Muslim country. Truly, they adhere to the teaching of the masters, of the prophet. Yeah, we applaud. <laughs> and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. <laughs>
भी देंगे सॉरी थैंक यू फॉर रियली लव योर नेबर्स एंड हेल्प इन हेल्पलेस पीपल इन टाइम ऑफ नीड दिस इज ट्रूली ब्रदरहुड दिस इज रियली रिलीजियस इट्स जस्ट टॉकिंग इट्स इजी डूइंग इट इज गुड आई रियली थैंक यू एंड मे योर ब्लेसिंग be many for forever my your country prosper have peace happiness my your people <laughs> have all the comforts that they need all the comfort that you that you afford to others will come to you your people many fold many generation thank you so much may god bless you all of this country and i thank you personally thank you thank you so much so much okay Now, now okay if you here outside disciples if it's legal okay if it's allowed and if you can afford it by your own mean you know if your house have room if you can have extra money to spare to help them in their time of desperate need and later they find job they are not beggars they are not bad people <laughs> they just run they had to run for their life and the lives of their children you know i mean nobody would send a little baby 3 3 4 years old in such a small dinghy and then wash die drown in the ocean like that and then wash ashore like that for the whole world to see war is horrible i always say that but now you can see it first hand now that we have internet thanks to internet thanks to television that the world can be awakened to such a horror of untold story the people have no i cannot tell anybody they just had to run some people even went on such a dangerous journey that they know that's a dangerous five times women i heard that one woman you know i just reported on tv nobody would do that would risk such a terrible journey and fail three five times almost dying still going you understand there must be something more more dangerous and death so that it cannot stop them understand that yeah so this is shame shame on the world so i say this uh, we double all this donation you know like before and i can not to total together maybe more than 1 million we double this become like almost like three million for just the refugees just for this time <laughs> except hungary hungary yeah cuz they don't take in people they close their border so we don't give and they did give they did give we did we did donate also to hungary but because i thought they don't take people anymore but they we did give because in the beginning you know we give uh, equally i mean to whoever wherever the refugee stream in but uh, i say don't give any more and don't double cuz they they close their border it's it's okay whatever i don't criticize anybody we just do what we can and whoever <laughs> does good to others you know we really really thank them and we pray for them as well yeah okay now if you can uh if you can afford then you adopt you know some orphans or some people elderly something yeah do something oh what kind of hair is it? my hair is messy <laughs> yeah serve you right cuz you always smell you around here and i'm the only one who always come with you with new bath and new clothes and, and some makeup and <laughs> beautiful clothes for you <laughs> and come here just to smell the opposite <laughs> today if i smell and serve you right na yeah? <laughs> ah yeah i took some medicine which contain a little garlic in it so if i smell then you know what it's like na yeah? <laughs> for me every day here <laughs> coming to you <laughs> you don't smell like garlic but you know oh. <laughs> do you smell it yourself when you come in the room no no because you come in together and you sit down together <laughs> and <laughs> so and then you get used to it i soon in in 10 minutes or so i get used to it and i won't smell that much 
But even if I come to the window, he already come out and say hello to me already, the smell. And then, <laughs> uh, and because I sit higher, you know? If I sit lower, then you see, where is the master? <laughs> where, where is she? <laughs> Too small already. And if I sit on the floor, that's it. I kind of disappear. <laughs> okay. Uh, normally, I, I don't tell you all this, ne? Of course I don't. <laughs> But you sometimes know because FG report or something, but normally I don't tell nobody. Normally if you donate or you do something good, you should not tell. Because if you tell, you lost the merit. But I didn't do it for merit, so I don't care. I lost it, okay, I don't care. <laughs> bye bye merit. Yeah. So I, because I'm also your guy, so I have to tell you things. Yeah? As just, also as like a lesson. Yeah? Uh, how you say, first hand lesson. Yeah? Because I keep teaching you and I don't do anything, then it's <laughs> dry. Huh? Okay? Oopsie. So now and then you know it's good. Huh? It's good. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if for you, if you do donation, you should not tell. It's better. Okay? And you do directly. You don't give it to the nuns or my monk to give it away. I don't like that. I don't like that. Money is a funny thing, okay? Unless you have to, but you don't have to. You give direct to Red Cross or to the embassy of the country, whatever, wherever you can, okay? As much as you can. Even two, three dollars help, no? Only if you have it. If you don't have it, it's okay. Yeah? You can see which center you may send some clothes or blanket, which extra that you don't use. They also be grateful. Wash it well and give, okay? Give what you can, all right? And, and adopt if you can. Yeah, okay? Only if you can, huh? Don't adopt and starve two, country, two, two families, huh? No, huh? Understand? <laughs> uh, okay, good, 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 good. <clears throat> Story time, okay? Uh, bedtime story for the big children. Mm. <laughs> Last night, uh, even your brother had nightmare that I have a lot of children. Of course I have. You look at yourself, huh? <laughs> children with gray hair, with bare, huh? <laughs> and with grandchildren already in, in their family. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, in Vietnam, because, um, for example, in, in, in Vietnam, you know, if, like, I'm the teacher, yeah? And they always address me as, uh, uh, like, a master father, yeah? And they address themselves to me as children. Understand? Yeah. When they say to me, they don't say, uh, I tell you this, but they say, your child would like to tell you this. Understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Therefore, they, the, the rumor that I have a lot of children, but it's true. They didn't tell lies. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Bad reputation. No husband, but a lot of children. My God, how did she manage? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I tell you it's, uh, one more a good story. Okay? Yes. Now, uh, and if you help any refugees in any way, I thank you in advance. And may your merit also be manifold, yeah? Even though if you don't need it, okay? If you need it, then you can have merit. But the best is that we go up, huh? Any of you want to stay here and enjoy merit for many aeons, like the Buddha say? Aeons! 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 It's not like one or two thousand years. It's all God. Remember? Yeah. Ah, they donate just something to the monks of the Buddha and they enjoy 91 aeons. Richness, power, high position, good looking. <laughs> so refined. <laughs> yeah? Don't want? No. Tell a lie. <laughs> the truth? No. The truth? True. Really? Yes. Why? Wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice to be like, uh, you know, king of a country? No. Princess? No. Beautiful looking? No. You thinking? No. <laughs> why, why are you thinking? <laughs> it's tempting, right? It's tempting, no? You like that? Oh, no, no, look at that, look at that. What? Huh? You pray, huh? Oh no no don't don't come back. Uh, I come down I don't have room more for you. 
<laughs> If I come down, other people will sit here. You sit in heaven, okay? You don't come here and, and compete. I already have problem with such a <laughs> my group right now already. Okay. Uh, all right. What for you come down? I will be there with you in heaven. Every heaven you are, I will be there. You see me. No problem. Better than here even. Yeah. But you must first go to heaven. <laughs> Make sure you go to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever you do for charity, it has to be from pure love in your heart. Okay? You have to be, like sympathize for the people who really need. Imagine it's you. Okay? Imagine it's you. It could be you. The world is so chaotic. Country, country is normally peaceful. Suddenly it broke out in war for just a piece of land or just an oil mine or just some uh, precious stone mine or wh whatever reason or even for water. Because we using up all the clean water that some country having trouble due to climate change. You know, many lakes dry up, sweet water, and people fight with each other also for water, to be in charge of that water, because water is life here on the planet. Understand? Yeah. yeah. Therefore, it's just, you never know. Hmm? You never know. You never know when the war broke out, huh? Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Even Korea, you know, now is unstable again. Huh? Yeah, I never know. <laughs> okay, let's forget all that. We go to the Buddha's land in our ancient time, 2,000 plus years ago, mm, 2,000 some hundred years ago. See what people doing there, okay? We forget it for the moment, all the turbulence in our present life. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth. And I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, According to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Oh, this is a story about uh, a person named Copper Tooth. <laughs> Probably it's shining inside, you know. <laughs> you know, some people, they, they have gold cover their teeth. Uh, it used to be fashion, even. Yeah, yeah it's just, beauty is just, it's a different, <laughs> different taste. Like in Africa, they make the ear very big hole, or put a big tree in it, <laughs> a big piece of tree branch in it. The bigger, the more beautiful. And sometimes put things through the nose, the longer, the more beautiful. And nowadays, they even do that. They pierce the nose, pierce the eyebrow, pierce the titties, and pierce, pierce, <laughs> pierce uh, everywhere, you know? Even put, pierce, put something in their tongue. Uh, and when they talk, they're showing off like, <laughs> so they can see some shining object inside their, their tongue. Oh my God, I have difficulty chewing my food already. Fancy you have to worry about that. Yeah, and in some country like Vietnam in old time, you know, they still dye their teeth black, and that's supposed to be beautiful. If a woman has black teeth, then they call it it's like a... Your black, your teeth as black as onyx, thing like that. You know, that's supposed to be a praise for a beauty <laughs> in old time. My mother, when she was alive, because she belonged to the older generation, you saw her teeth is still black. Yeah, because of dyeing the teeth. Nowadays we dye hair, but they dye the teeth. Understand? They also dye the hair, but black. When you get older, your hair gets gray, so they dye it black again. 
Okay, so different beauties appear to different countries, different tastes of people. You know that, huh? And some people start to all their face, you know, different way, and that's called beautiful, tough. And some tattoo all over their body. I think it's good. <laughs> oh, I, I even, is even it's beautiful. I, I'd rather stay ugly. <laughs> you know, needles in your body, you know. Uh, that's one story I told you already about a guy who wanted to do some tattoo, you know, and he saw some lion, you know, and he said, "Well, oh, lion are the king of the animals. He want to show off that he's also like lion." So he came to tattoo shop, asked the guy to tattoo for him a, a lion on his back, and then lay down everything okay, and then the guy just begin to needle him, yeah? and the 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 tough guy says, "Ow, ow, ow! <laughs> what are you doing? Which?" I say, I'm tattooing you. You want a lion, no? Okay, which part of the lion <laughs> are you doing? Said, I'm just started with the tail. So I say, forget about the tail. Do something, uh, some other part. You know, sometimes the lion don't show the tail. It's cup it in, so no need, no need. Okay, we show the lion like, sleeping with the tail under, under his legs. Fine, fine, okay, okay. And the tattooer begin again, pinching somewhere else. He says, oh! What are you doing? Where? What are you doing? I'm tattooing, sir. You know, which part of the lion are you tattooing? I'm just starting with the rear. <laughs> no, forget the rear. <laughs> Can you do something else first? Okay, which part do you want to start? Okay, how about the shoulder, maybe? Okay, so he started the shoulder, and then he, ow, 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 again. <laughs> and I think finally he forgot the whole lion, he come out. You know, <laughs> with the tail under the legs. <laughs> oh man, similar like that. Mm. So I rather, you know, being ugly than tattoo to be beautiful. <laughs> oh man, how beautiful can it be? Yeah, if God wants you to, to tattoo your body, yeah, lion or whatever, then He would have let you be born with that, huh? Yeah. yeah. Nowadays we tattoo too much. <laughs> Somebody, I saw some TV, sometimes they introduced the whole body, not one millimeter without tattoo. Wow. Yeah. And the face less, but the whole body is full of things. How do, how do they bear that? <laughs> Truly, didn't have enough with hell suffering, I guess. <laughs> hell was too short. <laughs> hell journey was too short. Okay. Now, Copper Tooth, the thief killer. Hmm? Uh, this story was given instructions, you know, like, though a thousand speeches are made of meaningless lines. Yeah. Meaning sometimes we talk a lot. <laughs> just now I was talking about that. Mm -hmm. Just now we just say talking is easy, mm -hmm. you know, and cheap. Doing it is good. So now Buddha says something like, though a thousand speeches are made of meaningless lines. Okay, now let's see what's that. So this instruction was given by the teacher, meaning the Buddha here, eh? while, while he was in residence as the Veluvana, with reference to Copper Tooth, a public executioner. Oh God, I hope it's something good. We are told, I mean, first I have heard, I guess, from Anan again, yeah? I don't know why he didn't say, at first we have heard. Okay, never mind. We are told that 500 thieves, less one, I mean probably 499 and half, something like that, yeah? <laughs> less one made a living by plundering villages and other acts of violence. Now a certain man with copper-colored teeth and tawny skin, his body co covered with scars, came to them and said, Let me also live lived with you. I want to join you. Yeah, okay. They took him to the ringleader of the thieves, saying, This man also wishes to live with us. The ringleader of the thieves looked at the man and thought to himself, This man's nature is inordinately cruel. He is capable of cutting off the breast of his mother and eating it or of drawing the blood from the throat of his father and drinking it. Blah, God. Uh, don't let your children uh, get hold of this, okay, until they are 21. Uh, 
or, or 18, you know, <laughs> the legal age. This is not for children under 18. Yeah. Just like some of the film, they say not for children under 18 or 16. This one's supposed for 18, huh? 16, huh? Under 16, huh? 16 or 18. 16, yeah. 16 is better, okay? No PG, yeah? A rate, R rate. Mm. <laughs> Too violent, okay? This is the thinking of the uh, thief's leader, okay? Might not be so, yeah? He was judging the man who newly want to join them. He was judging him by looking at the face. Maybe he's right, I don't know yet. We, we will go further. Some people can read faces, you know? Like this face is the kind of what and what character, and that face is what kind of character. Well, people change, you know, people change. Yeah. In our group, we have all kinds of characters. We all change into better one. Yeah. Society sometimes is very unkind. It teaches us a lot of bad things. It forces us to do a lot of bad things because nobody guides us and for survival and for uh, sometimes for, for to be like everybody else. We sometimes have to do something which is against our conscience and will. But the important is we know it's bad and we change. Okay, everybody made a mistake mm -hmm. sometime. All right, yeah. And after we know we change, then we don't go back again to such a behavior. Then it's good. It is still good. Yeah, it's better late than never. But it's never late to change to a better uh, person. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> And not just change, but do the opposite to r recover dam what damage you have done no, no? Okay, to your life, especially, and to others. Whatever damage you've done for anyone is first will be the damaging to yourself. It will be always like that. Mm. That's why in every religion, said, always say to you, love others as much as yourself. Yes, because others are yourself. Whatever you've done to others will come back to you manifold. So never do unto others what you don't like to be done to yourself. Every religion teaches the same. Yeah? Okay. So the countries that I have mentioned, they truly do a good job. Truly love their neighbor, just as the Christianity taught. They're truly Christianity. Yeah? They're truly Christians and truly Muslim. Muslim... Uh, religion also teach people to help others, okay? Yeah. And whatever is say that the prophet say to kill others, that is not him say that. No, they put it on after to use him to to make trouble or to control. Understand? Just like nowadays, many so-called Muslim using the religion to kill, to maim people, to harass people, to kidnap people, kidnap girls, and forbid girls to study and all that. These are not Muslim. No, it is something inside them, want to control people, want to get power, want to be famous, whatever. This is not Muslim, no. Just make a really bad name for Muslim. So many countries, they don't want to take in the refugees because they think they are Muslim. And Muslim for them is a bad, you know what I mean? Some people have this kind of impression. You also cannot blame them. You can only... Feel sorry for the really good Muslim has to be uh, had such a collective karma with some bad uh, people who are using Muslim as an excuse to 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 do violence, yeah, to cause suffering and harm to other people. We only can feel so, uh, sorry for the Muslim people, good one. Therefore, I'm very glad that the Christian countries taking all these Muslim refugees. Understand? This is even double good for them, double good to them. In spite, despite that the so-called, the, the bad people who use Muslim and harm, do harm to them in different countries, they still take in the Muslim refugees. And really, bravo, bravo, and bravo. We have to appreciate that. Understand? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Because if you're Christian and you only take in Christian, then what good are you? Huh? then you still have racist, yeah? a, a differentiate. Uh, um, yeah, uh, and if, if you are just Muslim and just take in a Muslim, then <laughs> it's okay, it's very good, but not excellent, yeah? Not truly, unconditionally good, yeah, okay? So I'm very pleased 
I'm very appreciative of this Christian country. They truly are a Christian country. Oh, I mean, except one or two, yeah, like Lebanon or Turkey, mm, Jordan. Yeah, the, the rest are Christian countries. Yeah, and I'm very, 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 very thankful, you know, yeah, because they, they don't discriminate. Yeah, it's really very good of them. Double good, yeah, <laughs> double good. Yeah, if they just take in any refugees, you know, or even Buddhist refugees, peaceful, you know, <laughs> peaceful people. And uh, most, mostly we never heard of Buddhists doing anything wrong to anybody or any country, you see? Yeah, it's never a Buddhist who carry bomb or do massacre anywhere, or the whole Buddhist history. Therefore, it's probably easier to take in the Buddhist, you know? But the Muslim has, because many people use the Muslim to do bad things, to do violence, to harm, to hurt, to kill. Therefore, even that, the Christian country still take in the refugees originate from Muslim religion, then I really, really deeply impressed and thankful and very pleased and may there be, be blessed double for that even. You know? Okay? Understand? Yeah, that's really good. That's excellent. Yes. Mm. I was so pleased today to see that Slovenia opened their arms and taking ten thousand refugees. Small country. <laughs> you know? Very small and not very well off. Yeah. And take in and Croatia also. Oh, these are good, 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 good. Yeah, very. These are new, new. <laughs> you know, new on the block. <laughs> Joining the whole group. Oh, I'm so pleased today. I feel very good today. Very happy. You can see I'm smiling the whole day through. No? <laughs> yeah, I walk in and out. Huh? You saw me today, huh? Yeah. Yes. Ah, there's a big smile on my face. I walk in and out. <laughs> Ah, I was smiling, and you probably didn't know why, huh? Now you know, right? Yes. Yeah. Mostly I'm smiley, except when I have a, a, a tiger face sometimes, but mostly it's smiling, but today big smile, huh? Yeah, because of that. I feel good about Slovenia and America, yeah. Even though they're not in Europe, but they want to take in 10,000 refugees. That's a long way, you know? 10,000 don't mean a lot, but they have to pay for the air ticket for them to go from Europe to America. Understand? Yeah, and take care of them all the way. And then have to make housing for them, you know, health care and everything. All free at first, of course, until they can stand on their feet and find a job, until they learn English first. Do you understand? Yes. That's a lot of time, a lot of financial sacrifice for the Americans' people, but they will be blessed, <laughs> blessed, multi, multiple, multiple, multiple. I'm so happy, yes. The, these people, maybe they don't think of merit, they don't understand the karma concept in Buddhism, but they should know that what you saw, so, so will you reap. If you help others, your merit will be double, triple, you know, for some. <laughs> Uh, fifth sum, sixth sum, tenth sum, oh, multiply, multiply for generations. Yeah. Remember many Buddhists, that story that the Buddha told? Yeah, I mean, from himself. Yeah. Buddha don't tell lie. what for? <laughs> he has nothing to hide and nothing to gain by telling lie. And Anand was a monk. He repeated the story. He wouldn't add in one word. That's why in some story, repeating some words is funny, you know? But uh, keep it at this. I saw some uh, some of these translated already shortened version. But I saw the real sutra. Many uh, repeated, you know, repeated word, repeated sentence, and then left it all untouched. So respect for for the Buddha teaching that it didn't cut anything, and the translation in some area don't cut also. Just like sometimes I talk to you and I repeated some word, you know unnecessary, or I corrected some word, and then you don't edit it, you just leave it like that. It is like that in many of Buddhist sutra, meaning whatever the Buddha said, comma, <laughs> period, <laughs> slash, they left as is. Yeah. So it was really authentic and original. Hmm? Just like the, the, the song I sing, you know? Sometimes it's wrong 
tune. Some of everybody I did not correct because the, it came out the way it is. I took the book and look at the poem. I sing as I read. Understand? So if he, if he says not so, so beautiful like professional, so be it. I didn't want to be famous as a singer. Okay, I just sing it for you. Okay, in case you like to listen, then there is some music for you and my voice. Okay, yeah, familiar voice you like, huh? Okay, so this leader was thinking very, very negatively of the new member who wanted to join them. Therefore, he refused his request, saying, It will not do for this man to live with us, to stay with us. Oh. Although he, has, he had thus been refused admission to the band of thieves, hmm, he went and won the favor of a certain pupil of the ringleader by his courteous attention to him. Ah, the leader did not accept him. But he went and, you know, caught uh, the student. You know, he's a ringleader, uh, ringleader's um, uh, protege, 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 what? Protege. Huh? Protege. protege. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Diana. Mm. So he, uh, ah, this is good. It's no, sometimes it's like that. Yeah, bribery. Uh, not just with money, but with manner, you know, mm. politeness and flattery. Yeah, so because he was very courteous, you know, courteous, I mean, very polite, very humble, behaving to, to this student of the ringleader, mm. you know, of the uh, retinue, one of the retinue people. Okay, so this pupil, pupil, <laughs> student, yeah, that pupil, not pupil, no, 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 <laughs> pupil, <laughs> this pupil, <laughs> very seldom <laughs> I use this word. This student took the man with him, and a pupil or whatever, you know, the members of the gang, took the man with him, approached the ringleader of the thieves and said to him, Master, this man is dutiful servant of ours. Ah, you see, outward appearance and manner do sometimes fool people. Yeah. Oh, bestow your favor on him, please, master. Yeah, he told to the, his leader, the thief leader. Having made this request, he turned the man over to the ring leader of the thieves. Oh, recommended by your favorite member. Of course, ne? Okay, so one day the citizens join join forces with the king's men, captures capture those thieves. Oh, took them to court and arranged arrange them before the Lord, the Lords of Justice, you know, Supreme Court, I guess, like nowadays. Ne? The justices ordered their heads to be chopped off with an axe. Oh, man, they're only thieves. They didn't kill people, no? Well, maybe they did. Sometimes the thieves kill people because they don't want to be recognized or don't want to be reported. Yeah. The justice order that has to be chopped off with an axe, so said the citizen, they asked, who will put these men to death? After a thorough search, they were unable to find one single man who was willing to put them to death. Nobody wanted to chop their head off. Nobody wanted to. Finally, they said to the ringleader of the thieves, you put these men to death and we will spare your life and give you a rich reward besides. Whew. You kill them, huh? The, tell to the leader of the thieves, say, you kill your members. But because they had lived with him, he also was unwilling to put them to death. Oh, at least he has some moral. Very good. In like manner, also all of the 500, less one, I mean 499, okay? They say four, 500. Less one, so I say four hundred ninety-nine. Okay, uh, refuse. Oh, probably include the ring leader. Then it's five hundred. Oh. <laughs> okay, four hundred, five hundred, less one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, refuse when when asked. Last of all, they ask that scare Tony Coppertooth. Yes, indeed, he said, consenting. He said he will kill them. 
So he put to death all the thieves and in return received his life and rich gifts besides. Whew, that's terrible. But he was very scared, you know. He already had no way to go to live his life, so he joined the thieves. And now if he didn't do it, he's done for. Eh? Even the thieves didn't want him. The ringleader was right. When he saw him, he said, this man is very cruel, very violent. He would do anything, you know, kill in a violent manner. Therefore, he didn't want, even the thieves did not want to accept this man. Incredible, huh? Even the thieves can see faces and, and predict their personality, either, either they're peaceful or violent. Understand that? And even thieves, they have their moral. You see that? They did not want to kill their own member just to survive and have richness. So thieves are not always as bad as we think. Of course, thieves are bad. No? We don't say, we don't encourage this kind of behavior. But in some people, in high society, or in some high political position, do worse thing than thieves. Thieves, they only take your money. But some cruel people, some either in high position or some cruel people, they even take your life. Money you can re-earn, right? Or you can borrow to survive meanwhile. Life you cannot borrow. You cannot re, re, <laughs> rehab, you know, uh, re-earn another life. Not immediately like that. Oh, wow, so easy. So sometimes people uh, punish the thief so cruelly. Like in some country, they chop your hand off. If you're caught, if you are as a thief, or if somebody say you are a thief, who knows? Somebody uh, sometimes wrongly accused, you know? They say, chop your hand off. Yeah? Chop the hand off, how are they going to be, become a good citizen again, if they want to? You understand? They cannot work anymore. Yeah? So, I, it's a very cruel practice, and it does good to no one. The thief, they already stolen the things. People already lost money. Uh, one person or one family already give grief because of loss. Yeah, the best is to give that family of loss if they need some money to return for that, and make the thief go work for labor or something to to redeem their bad deeds, and maybe they have a chance to turn around. You see, some thieves do turn around. Some criminal do change, you see, some reason, the religious reason or something touched them or they just fed up or they originally did not want to be thieves or to be criminal. They, ha they have been forced to do it. So the whole society or government are to be blamed also, not just that person. You know, the education system, the parents, the background, the friends they have, the influence. Come here. <laughs> He's crying outside. <laughs> Come in. Cakes, where are the cakes? Give me some cake for him. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Cake, give me cake quickly. Come here. Are you a good boy, Joe? Good boy. You're a wonderful boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are good boy. Say hello. Say hello, Paul, Paul, Paul. Sit down, and Paul. Sit down, sit, Paul. Paul. Mm. Yeah, you're beautiful. Everybody loves you. Paul, Paul. Shake hand, shake hand. Yeah, really shake hand. You are good boy here. Shake hand again. Who who you like? Who, who do you like now? Sit, sit and shake hand. Anybody you like, <laughs> or just symbolic, huh? No? If you don't want, sit down then. Come on, here. You are a good boy. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, here you. Sit like this. No, like that. Otherwise, he might bite your finger by mistake. Are you a good boy? Good boy. Sit here. No one will shake hands. That's some good. Don't do like this. After he finished, after he finished. I'm so glad that he 
people friendly now because in, before he's not like that. <laughs> I had to bribe him whenever some new people come, I sit far away and throw some bone for us, you know, veggie bone, vegan bone, then slowly, slowly go near. And he's still skeptic, you know, he run away. <laughs> he go and steal quickly the bone and he run very far. <laughs> Somebody help to clean uh, later, okay? Sorry, I don't have a bowl here. Is somebody please bring him water? Where are we? Where were we? What did I say? Okay, okay. Oh, no. oh, you like that part. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. <sighs> I tell you a, a, a bad joke, huh? Yeah. There's a one, one, uh, uh, three people, yeah. Th three people are captured by some uh, a Muslim leader, yeah, and they want to chop their head off. So one by one, they put them under the guillotine and try to chop the head. Uh, but uh, the guillotine just come halfway, and then it stop. It doesn't go down, chop the head. The first man, so he said, oh, this is Allah's will, so we let him free. The second man, guillotine also don't come down, same. Yeah. So uh, the leader of this uh, ex extremist Muslim something, you know, not the normal Muslim, they don't do this. Nah? Leader of normal Muslim, they don't do this. The Muslim people are very uh, he helpful, very loving and kind. You know, they give you anything they have if you need, normally like that, okay? Yeah. So in Ramadan time, mostly it's the time to go and give gift to poor people also, and to forgive, yeah? So Ramadan is also just like your Christmas, understand? You give gifts and you go out to charity and you forgive each other. Okay, now this guy, and then the second man also, the guillotine did not work. And then, and then the third man, and the third man, when the third man turned, he said, I have been observed, they said to the leader, he said to the leader, I have been observed that there is this piece of s stone you know, stuck in this, uh, in this uh, uh, the rail of the guillotine. That's why it didn't work two times. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah, some people like that, busy body. So, of course, the three of them, job. <laughs> yeah. Don't be too busy, body like that, okay? <laughs> Talk only when you need to. <laughs> Sometimes you make trouble for me also. Yeah? yeah. All right, so now, in like manner, also they brought in the 500 thieves from the country to the south of the city and arranged them before the justices. When the justice ordered their heads to be chopped off, they asked each thief, beginning with the ringleader, to put his companions to death, but found not a single one willing to act as executioner. Another different group of thieves, yeah? They also brought there to be judged by the court. And then they also asked them to, the ringleader to chop, to, to chop the other's member head off so that they, he can live, and richly, but he also refused. And even the member also, none of them are willing to chop each other's head off to survive, to, to live. Wow, imagine. Huh? The thieves, they have the bond of brotherhood. They have their own moral standard even. Imagine that. Yeah? Many people would be willing to sacrifice their, their own even family member just to live, and live richly even with reward. No, they don't. You see? So you see, the thieves, sometimes they are forced to be thieves because they were, like, maybe family hungry, have no job to do, or, you know, the society forced them to be thieves. But they just steal, you see? They steal, mostly they steal from rich people, understand? Uh, they don't do nothing more, yeah. <sighs> so they, nobody want to chop the other member off, including the ringleader. So then they said then, it's enough for now, okay, boy? Mm. Mm. Okay.
for now. It's done. Right. All right. There's a vegan, vegan bones for the teeth. I don't have time to brush him now. Mm, he been brushed already after dinner. <laughs> now he eats again, so I give him some of this. Uh, so then they said, the other day, a certain man put 500 thieves to death. Where is he? We saw him in such and such a place, was the reply. So they summoned him and said to him, put these men to death and you will receive a rich reward. Yes, indeed, he said. The same man, do it again, said he, consenting. So he put them all to death and received his reward. Oh, this is truly a very wicked person. In the beginning, the first time, maybe he has done that because he was scared. Eh? And the thief also didn't treat him nicely to begin with. So, okay, maybe he has excuse. Eh? But this time he already lived richly, rewarded already, after he killed 500 men. And now he do it again. Really has no heart. Even a thief had better heart than this man or with uh, some other people in this planet. You know, they kill just like they squat a fly. Yeah, We don't even do that to a fly, all of us. Yeah, understand? We, the group, we don't do that. We don't kill a fly even. But this guy, he kill people as if people squat the fly without remorse, without reason at all. Terrible. So the ring leader, the first ring leader, was really absolutely right. Huh? He just killed. Okay. The citizen, after that, the citizens consulted together and said, this is the a most excellent man of oh God. We will make him permanent executioner of thieves. <sighs> The thieves don't deserve death, I tell you, honestly and fairly. They don't deserve death. Maybe they deserve punishment of some kind, you know, and to give, to give them a chance to turn around. They're only thieves, you know, they're not murderers. And they didn't do anything uh, harm to harm the security of the nation even, understand? They're not state enemies. They're just thieves because they probably have no work to do. They couldn't find job. Yeah, in some country, people really could not find job, and they couldn't receive benefit, social benefit. So they are forced to do that. Maybe to to take care of themselves or take care of his their families. Understand? Some people are forced to do that. Yeah, and in the Bible, it is say that the one who steal for bread of uh, steal for bread are not guilty. So why the law in, in the old, old time was so strict like that, I don't understand. Whew. And now the chopping hand is also doesn't help either, because you never know, maybe he's wrongly accused by somebody who didn't like him. Understand? It happened all the time. Sometimes people in a high society or a good position or look like trustworthy, they go report to the so, the, the authority that this man is a thief, such and such, sometimes they trap him. You never know. If just jail him, and maybe sometime the truth will come out that he wasn't a thief at all. It's just a victim of a scheme. You understand? Mm. So I think to put the thief to death is too cruel, too unjust. Eh? Even the thieves themselves don't want to kill each other. That means they're good. They could be changed. They could be taught to be a better citizen. Understand? Thieves are just stealing something, small thing to survive. But big politicians, big leaders, they're still big, still big from the nation. You know? And nobody even know about it because they're too powerful. And even people know nobody dare do anything because they are too too powerful. So it's not fair. It's not fair to kill such a petty thief. Eh? Yeah, I think it's not fair. Who still has the heart not to kill each other even? Understand? Even just to live and richly reward it. Much, much better than many of on our planet. Don't you think? Yeah. So I'm telling you, 
other religions teach tolerance and forgiveness. It is because of that. And many countries abolish death penalty because of that. You know, uh, abolish harsh punishment because of that. Because you never know, maybe he's wrongly accused. As, you know, it's, we've seen some cases came out to light. That the po- some persons stay in prison 20 years, 30 years for the things he never committed. It's just because he's black or because he's in, he in the wrong place. You know what I mean? Or seen by wrong people. It, because sometimes the witness don't even see the correct person in the dark or just see like that. I would not recognize you if you come back again. Some I will recognize. But some I have seen only one time, two times, and I don't, don't work cor- together personally. I probably would not remember your face when you come back again. And you sit here for many hours. Not to talk about just splittingly, uh, uh, flittingly saw, you know, in the dark through the neighborhood or through the bushes or something like that. It can be also very risky, can be wrong, you know? Can be can be very uh, hazardous for that person. Yeah. All right. <coughs> so saying, they uh, elected him as a national executioner. So so saying, they gave him the post. Later on, they they bo- brought another five hundred thieves also from the west, and still later five hundred from the north. How come always five <laughs> hundred? It's funny. Must be a lucky number at that time or something. <laughs> yeah, the Buddha story always always five hundred this, five hundred that. I guess it's just more or less, nah? Huh? It's a big number. Mm. Thus he put to death two thousand thieves brought in from each of the four cardinal points. You know, big big cities. Yeah. As time went on and one or two men were brought in each day, he put them all to death. For a period of 55 years, he acted as public executioner. I'm sorry, I didn't read this story before. <laughs> Maybe if I read it, I probably think it's too gruesome. I would not read it to you. But since we are halfway, we continue? Or not? You see what happened to him, eh? Right? I'm also curious. <laughs> oh, I just go and read by myself. <laughs> Huh? And you don't have to know, do you? Yes? Yes, 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 or yes, no? Yes, 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 yes. yes what? To know. To know. Oh, okay. Because uh, when I ask you, you don't need to know, right? And you say yes, so that means you don't. <laughs> Wrong answer. Okay. Now, I understood. I just want to tease you. Okay. Now, of course you all want to know. Who wouldn't, huh? <laughs> Anybody who doesn't want to know the end of the thriller, raise hand. None, none of you, I know that. You know, you, you like to know what happened, right? Yes. You can read half, half, halfway and say, okay, okay, and, you know, soap opera next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. In old age, he could no longer cut off a man's head with a single blow but was obliged to deliver two or three blows. Oh, that's even worse, terrible. Causing much unnecessary suffering to the victims. The citizens thought to themselves, we can get another executioner of thieves. This man subject his victims to so much unnecessary torture. Oh, a little compassion, huh? Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Of what use is he any longer? Accordingly, yeah, because if you chop one time, then the victim die quickly, understand? Mm-hmm. But it keeps chopping again and again and again. This is terrible. It's a prolonged suffering, understand? Mm-hmm. So at least they, they have some humane, humane feeling for the victims. But more human would be not execution, <laughs> not execute anyone at all, especially just thieves, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are bigger thieves than that in the government, any government, any time, any time, anywhere in the history of humans, right? And they're untouched. They're truly untouchable class. Yeah, nobody can touch them. <laughs> Accordingly, they removed him from his office. During his term of office, 
as executioner of thieves, he had been accustomed to receive four perquisites. Per, four perquisites. Perquisites. Okay, by the way, if any of the the le lesson, any of the story I read for you, if it's a similar violin, please don't let your children read it or know it, okay? Because it's too much for them. You should not know that. Understand, yeah? Mm -hmm. For adults, it's okay. You are grown up, okay. There's no children here, okay. Yeah? All right? Mm -hmm. To understand, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. The one that you see, it's too much violin or some violin part in it, like this one even. Please don't let your children hear it or see it, okay, huh? Until they're grown up, 18, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Not just this story, but any story, okay? Oh, God, in every time of human history, always something, huh? Some bad stuff. Buddha also had to go uh, undergo a lot of suffering, too. Sometimes uh, in a much violent way, huh? Yeah? So anything that's just not good for the children, you take it away, okay? Only listen to it yourself. Okay. Uh, so, like old clothes for him to wear, milk porridge made with fresh ghee for him to drink, uh, jasmine flowers wherewith to deck himself. Ooh. You know jasmine gallon? Yeah. Uh, and perfumes wherewith to anoint himself. But these four perquisites he received no longer because he's fired from his office for being old. On the day he was deposed from office, he gave orders that milk porridge should be cooked for him, and taking with him old clothes and jasmine flowers and perfumes, he went to the river and bathed. Having done so, he put on the old clothes, decked himself with garlands, anointed himself, uh, his limbs, you know, perfume, probably oil, you know, for old age and stuff. Uh, but for smelling nice, so they call it perfume, yeah. Anointed his limbs and went home and sat down. They set before him milk porridge made with fresh ghee and water for rinsing the hands. At that moment, the elder Sariputra emerged from his meditation. Sariputra, one of the just for the newcomer, one of the Buddha's foremost few disciples. Yeah, yeah. Sariputta, Mauda, Galayana, uh, Ananda, and uh, I forgot other name. Okay, uh, yeah. Quite a few. The foremost disciple, good one. Nah? good and attain arahanship. Yeah, liberated forever. Yeah. At that moment, the elder Sariputta emerged from his meditation. He said to himself, Where ought I go today? Surveying his rounds for arms, he saw milk porridge in the house of the former executioner. Considering within himself, Will this man receive me kindly? He was asking himself, Sariputra. Yeah. He became aware of the following. Two point <laughs> parentheses. This excellent man will receive me kindly and will thereby gain a rich reward. Oh man. The monk even go to the home of the executioner. But it's just his job. Yeah? What to do? Yeah. So the elder put on his robe, took his bow bow. Bow, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid sometimes I read it wrong because <laughs> I don't always read this bow, chopsticks, and knives and fork every day. Bow, right? Bow. bow for arm, you know? Yeah, for arms. So put on, took his bow and showed himself at the door of the former executioner's house. You must know that this is the last porridge that he probably had. You see? Because normally, if he's an executioner, then they brought all this to him every day. But he's no longer, so this is 
the last time he will have all this. Né? Uh, <coughs> the man saw the elder, the monk. Né? Elder is also the form of reverence for the monk. Yeah? The man saw the elder, his heart was filled with joy. Oh, such a man can feel joy. Seeing the monk, he thought to himself, for a long time I have acted as executioner of thieves, and many are the men I have put to death. Now milk porridge has been prepared in my house, and the elder has come and stands at my threshold. Now I ought to present arms to this reverence. So he removed the porridge which had been set before him. Uh, you, you must know Sariputra was sitting in the meditation, and after that he uses, you know, intuitive power to see which place he should go for arms today, and he saw that man with the porridge. Not that he went there before and see the porridge. That's why he just arrived now. Understand that? So that you're clear. Okay. <coughs> he removed the porridge which had been set before him, approached the elder, the monk Sariputra, and paid obeisance to him. And escorting him into his house, he provided him with a seat, poured the milk porridge into his bowl, spread fresh ghee thereon, and standing beside him, began to fan him even. It's hard in India, yeah, at that time. Now for a long time, <coughs> he had not received milk porridge, and therefore desired greatly to drink thereof. For a long time he had not received milk porridge, therefore desired greatly to drink that. So the elder monk, you know, the uh, Sariputta knew that. So he said to him, Lay disciple, drink your own porridge. He did not even judge him uh, like a killer, practitioner, you know, executioner, and uh, I didn't judge him anything. He went to his house, sat there, and even though he went for the porridge, now he tell him, the executioner, to drink it, because he feel that he really like it so much, even though the monk would also like it as much. You know, he eats only once a day, and that porridge probably would be the only meal that he had today. After lunch, they don't go back in anymore. They have to go do other job, or go home to the Buddha, listen discourse, or do some other thing in the ashram. Understand? So, can you imagine, this is really monk, not like the so-called ascetic yesterday, understand? <laughs> Just thinking of eating the food that the Buddha cannot <laughs> eat because he gets lost in the way to find the home. Eh? Thinking of that already, even before the, the food prepared. Whew, ascetic indeed, <laughs> understand? Mm. And then forbid the benefactor, no, 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 his so-called disciple, to even go to see the Buddha. That means he's so blind and ignorant. Come here. If, okay, if he knows the Buddha teach something bad, then maybe he can forbid. Yeah? But if he teach good thing, then at least it's the same with him, with the ascetic teaching. Yeah? Then why does he forbid her to do that? If he already, if he's an ascetic monk and he know what the Buddha preached, he should know before he judge him. And, and you understand? This is a possessiveness, no? control, control, a controlling freak. <laughs> they call it in America. <laughs> it's not real ascetic monk. Yeah, ascetic monk don't forbid anybody do anything. If you're a monk. If you are go to somebody else, I would just say, don't go, don't go, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Right, correct. <laughs> come. You want to come? What's wrong? Never mind. Come here then. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Anything you want, you come here. What is wrong with you? Huh? Is he coming? He went huh? He went out again. Okay then. Don't walk again. Okay, with no reason. All right. So now, so he tell the the Sariputra told the executioner, the ex ex executioner. Okay, ex ex executioner. Tell him you drink it. Okay. Mm. Uh. The man placed the fan in the hand of another and drank the porridge. 
Oh, he did. Oh, must be very desirous for that. The elder in you know, Sariputra said to the man who was fanning him, "Go fan the lay disciple instead." Oh, he treated the executioner so good. First, he tell him to drink the porridge and tell that fan, fan who fan him, go and fan the executioner, ex executioner instead. Lay disciple, he meant this one. He meant the ex executioner. Okay. Ah. Uh, so while he was being fanned, the former executioner filled his belly with porridge <laughs> and then went and resumed fanning the elder, Sariputra. When the elder had finished his meal, he took his bowl, uh, meaning, meaning uh, if he took his bowl, meaning go wash, and so the elder will begin to s- preach. Understand that? Just like the same after Buddha, it, they always take the bowl. That is a sign of now is the lecture beginning. Whoa, whoa! What is wrong with you today? Come here. Come here, come here. This is what you want. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down first. Down. Okay, okay, never mind. Sit, okay, it's okay. Aish, you see. <laughs> okay, you can lay down. I told you to lay down. Oh, why you squeeze over there? All right then. Don't get the cold from that woman, huh? And ping pong that man. Back to me. There, another one. Good boy. All right. Uh, when the elder began the words, the words of thanksgiving to his host, uh, the man was not able to fix his mind on the elder's discourse. Too full, <laughs> I guess. Huh? <laughs> yeah. The elder, observing this, said to him, Lay disciple, why is it that you cannot fix your mind on my discourse? Uh, teaching, my lecture. Yeah. Reverend sir, <laughs> for a long time I have done deeds of cruelty. Yeah. Uh-uh, it's good. At least my voice is so soothing, <laughs> like singing lullaby. You know. What did you want to drive me with? <laughs> so people friendly now. Such an opposite character you are now, huh? It's due to vegan diet, I guess, huh? Or to my training. Hmm. But he's still not friendly to some. Depends, okay? You guys all behaving, okay? <laughs> he probably won't bite you, but he might warn you some some sort. Okay, now, mm, for a long time, you know, the, the executioner was feeling remorse inside him now, so he could not, uh, he could not uh, fix his mind on the discourse of Sariputra. It is like that. Sometimes in the, in the present of saintly people, you know, mm-hmm. your heart will open. Uh, uh, either your past or your present will, you know, reveal to you. Mm-hmm. Because your mind at that time very clear now. Whatever you've done is cannot be hidden mm-hmm. in the saintly energy of a highly practitioner. Understand? Therefore, the thing, bad thing come out. Huh? To clean off. Clean off. Huh? See, up to now he never remorse or repent nothing until Sariputra came to his house. And he was very glad, you know, normally a monk comes to your house and that is a very good thing and rare. And he just sits there and cannot think of anything but his cruelty in in a former time. It happened like that, okay? Yeah. So I have put many men to death. It is because I keep recalling my own past deeds that I am unable to fix my mind on your reverence discourse. The elder, Sariputra, said to himself, If that is the case, lay disciple, what wrong did you do? The bewildered disciple thought, According to what the elder says, I have done no wrong. Just his job. Yeah, I told you before. Eh? Said he to the elder, 
Very well, Reverend Sir, continue your discourse. <laughs> All right. As the elder pronounced the words of thanksgiving, <sighs> probably, I don't know, thanksgiving. <laughs> Why thanksgiving? Probably, probably thanks to the Buddha, the, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and all the past and present future Buddhas, you know, saintly, enlightened saints, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, and then he became tranquil. The man's mind became tranquil. And as he, he listened to the Dharma, he developed the quality of patience and progress in the direction of the path of stream entry, the beginner of initiation people. Yeah. So there are two or three kinds of disciples and followers at that time, you know, some are initiated, some are not. So today I guess he initiated him. Stream, you know, the sound entry. Sound hearer, like some in you know, some other story, they say sound hearer. Yeah, this is it. When the elder had completed the words of rejoicing, he departed. The lay disciple, I mean the ex ex executioner, the lay disciple accompanied him a little way and then turned back. As the lay disciple was returning, an ogress came along in the form of a cow. Some kind of uh, ghostling, yeah, ogress, yeah, <laughs> some type of, some type of demon, some some type of demon came along in the form of a cow, struck him with her shoulder and killed him. Oh, so he died and was reborn in the world of the two Sita gods. Just met Sariputta once and wholeheartedly offering the most desirous <laughs> uh, milk porridge with ghee even to the elderly, even though he so much desired himself. But he thought that, you know, now that the elder putra even come to my house, he felt honored and happy. So he offered that to him, offered him a seat even. Uh, so therefore he was born even one day only, half a day only. And accompany the Sariputra to see him off for a while and return. And one of the demons kill him. In the form of a cow, kill him. But then he's born immediately to Sita heaven. Oh, it's not that. In uh, in the world of the two Sita gods, yeah. The monks began a discussion in the hall of truth. Uh, after that. No? If you sit here for a while, your eyes also will be running. Uh, yeah. So the monks, and the Buddha's monk, yeah, at that time, uh, began a discussion in the hall of truth, in the meditation hall there where they live. Yeah. Ah, they said to themselves, "He who was an executioner of thieves, he who forty, who for fifty-five years committed acts of cruelty, today was relieved of his office." Today gave alms to the elder. Today met death. Where was he reborn? These monks just discussing himself, themselves. They don't know yet. The teacher came in, the Buddha came in, and asked them, Monks, what are you sitting here now, and what are you talking about? When they told him, he said, Monks, that man has been reborn in the world of the two Sita gods. Astro, <laughs> but high astro, good, very good. It's not hell. <laughs> it's supposed to go to hell. And because of such one sincere offer, which the monk did not even take, <laughs> the monk feels sorry for him and know that he so hungry and desire for it, he even returned and please take it. But you see, it's just the thought that cow, so much desire for the porridge, still want to offer it to the elder man and monk and treat him kindly, give him a seat and and fan him and all that, you know what I mean? So that is really precious. If somebody else give him rich people or normal, medium rich people give him a porridge, it is normal. This is a porridge offer from the heart of a cruel man. And suddenly rejoice and open and remorse and with all respect, treat him reverently like that. So even though the monk did not take the porridge, but he sincerely truly wanted to offer until the monk tell him to drink it. Understand? Mm. <coughs> so
So what to do? He drank it. He's an obedient <laughs> person, just like you. If I say, take the blessed food, ah, you jump on. <laughs> Don't have to ask you twice. No? <laughs> Before I open my mouth, you already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the blessed food has no chance to escape. Right? Cookies, candy, whatever, no chance. Ah. All right. So, all right. The monks uh, saw the Buddha say that, like that. So they asked uh, uh, the Buddha, "What did you What did you say, uh, World Honor One? He who killed men for so long time has been reborn in the world of two Sita gods." Yes, monks. Yes, he did. A great and good spiritual counselor. Did he receive? I mean from Sariputra? Yeah. He heard Sariputra teach the Dharma and profiting thereby acquired knowledge. When he departed from this existence, he was reborn in the world of the two Sita gods. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza, the Buddha pronounced. He who was executioner of thieves in the city listened to words well spoken, having gained patience Accordingly, he went to heaven and is in joy. Yeah. Uh, we'll honor one, the monk saying again. There is no great power in words for, of thanksgiving, and this man had done much wrong. Thanksgiving, initiation, <laughs> sorry, thanksgiving. Probably the translation from Pali, and he doesn't understand what means initiation. Nowadays, they don't give initiation in Buddhism anymore. It's all lost, okay? Yeah. That's why he does not understand why the world is spoken like this, and the man is liberated just like that. It's initiation into the sound hearer system, like you are, okay? Sound hearer, the inside sound. Okay. It's mentioned in every... In every Scripture, it's just people don't understand it. In six scripture, they mention it. You know, they call it Sabda. In uh, Buddhism, the inner sound or sound stream, you see? So you say he is stream entry, that means he is received the sound stream, okay? And then in Bible, also, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Word, sound, you know? Mm -hmm. Sound. <laughs> yeah, this like that. Mm. In many in many scriptures mentioned like that. Shabda is in Hindu, in Indian, yeah. Sounds, you know? Mm. Uh well honor one, there is no great power in words of thanksgiving. And this man had done much wrong. How could he gain something special with so little? Of course. They doubt. Eh? He's done nothing. He's done all cruelty all his life, and he's done not much. And how can he, he gain such a great merit like that? The teacher replied, meaning the Buddha replied, Monks, do not measure the Dharma I have taught as being little or being much. One saying possessed of meaning is of surpassing merit. So saying, he instructed them in the Dharma by pro pronouncing the following stanza. The Buddha, is, power is powerful. Hmm? He want to save whom, he save whom. He don't look a little merit or small merit or big merit, right? Besides, who knows, yeah? Yeah. Uh, who knows who is really cruelty? Some people are cruelty in their heart, yeah? Using different means to torture others, yeah, to harm others. Some people do it because it's their job, or they have nothing else to do, or they're poor, or they're forced to do it, and then it became habit, become a job. Yeah? It's, it's many different degree of cruelty. Yeah? Okay. At least this guy, he has repentance, he has remorse, even though late in life, but he has remorse, and he has reverence for the real practitioner. You see, many good people seem to have eyes, seem to have intelligence, don't even have half of the <laughs> grain of the wisdom of this executioner had, knowing who is great one. You see what I mean? Yeah, so he has something in him. Hmm? 
All right. Even though he's doing a cruel job, but he has something that he could recognize a good one, a meritorious one, the enlightened, saintly monk. You see what I mean? So he has something, in my opinion, of course. So now we, we see the Buddha's opinion already, right? Eh? And my little opinion, I add on to it. <laughs> you take it or leave it. <laughs> take the Buddha's wisdom, okay? Now, the Buddha pronounced the following stanza to teach the monks there, because they still have doubts. Then not all of them are as enlightened as Sariputra. Not everyone can see things as clearly as Sariputra. Okay? Sariputra has been with Buddha for a long time, and he practiced diligently, so whatever he gained is his own. But some monks there are relying on Buddha's grace and blessing in order to rise up, but doesn't know everything. You know what I mean? A different degree of enlightenment. Yeah. If you enlighten it through your diligence, then you know more. If you enlighten through the ga- grace of a master, then you know less or, or almost nothing. <laughs> you don't even know your your degree of enlightenment. Yeah, but never mind. If you still have faith, you follow the master's teaching, and you still go. Okay, knowing or not, or knowing, who cares? As long as you're in heaven, who cares? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Now in heaven, nobody needs to know that you know or not know. As long as you're heaven, you're safe. Sava then, huh? Okay. So the Buddha said this, though a, thousands, though a thousand speeches are made of meaningless lines, lines yeah. better the single meaningful line by hearing which one is at peace. Correct? Peace? Yeah? Peaceful? <laughs> no war? Yeah, okay. So the Buddha say even if somebody blah 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 a thousand lecture mean nothing, helps no one. Just talk talk. But even one single sentence, you know, like Sariputra, meaningful line, mean true, correct and powerful from inner realization. Tell somebody. Initiate that person, liberate it immediately. Understand? And change into a better person. Uh, that's what the Buddha means. Okay? <laughs> I also talk a lot. I also talk a lot. <laughs> I, I add a lot of ingredients <laughs> into the Buddha story, so it's a long time. I guess you're also tired. I release you. <laughs> so you go and maybe have a snack or a drink, and then you meditate, okay? Yeah. If you want to sit here, then you sit for a while. You want to? For a while to sink in the energy and then go out later? It's the same. You want to sit? Okay. Turn off light, turn off all the equipment.